you so much for inviting me to this talk. I'm not going to go into the technical aspects of how a model is created, because I'm a surgeon. And so I'm going to explain to you a little bit how we use what is printed by 3D printers. As we all know, ever since 3D printing started being used, the uses that it's put to have increased exponentially, and medicine is by no means been left behind. I always like to divide the medical uh, field and for uses for 3D printing into three areas. The first is uh, the printing of parts to used in surgical simulation. The second is using biomodels to train surgeons for educating doctors or medical students. And the third main group in practice, the most common use, is for the creation of a meta-measure prostheses. You see that in brain surgery and, and in jaw and facial surgery. These are data that I have drawn from the medical additive manufacturing 3D printing. And here you can see that biomodels are usually used for surgical planning before operation. We can use it so that when you go into uh, the operating theatre, it's a, it's a kind of a real anatomy what you find. We all have similar anatomies, but there are some anomalies which as surgeons, if we just find them, actually can make some of our procedures uh, different and or make us change the way we operate. And I say that uh, personally because I'm a surgeon. So when we go into the operating theatre and we know what we're going to find, we know what that person's anatomy looks like, it's far better for everybody. There are other, the second uh, largest area of use of uh, 3D printing is for patient education. So what we do is we can print a, a part of a patient's body, we, we show it, we can, we can train on it, and then we know what's going to happen when we move on to a surgical producer. It's also used for medical training, testing, verification and surgical practice. This is less developed, it's a little bit more complicated, but we have done it. In fact, we've done it here in San Sebastian. The anatomical uh, models improve the way the patient understands his or her illness and, and helps us and improves at the moment of surgery. So it really is important. Here are some examples. I'm not going to be too specific or too practical because this is not a medical forum, but it's just to show you what we're using 3D models for and what sort of benefits they provide us with. This is a printed heart with all its um, arteries, veins, vessels, and this is used to, in this case, to train doctors that are being trained. Uh, when I trained, I actually used dead bodies, corpses. And by the time I got to the corpse, a hundred students had used it before I'd got to it and there were bits missing or it wasn't quite as it should be. So if you've got this kind of exact model that's 3D printed, it's fantastic. This is the case of a patient who'd had an accident and had lost part of the instep of his foot. So a titanium... Um, 3D part was uh, printed and then used for the patient. So it's made to measure. We've got some already mm, parts, but it's better to have a 3D printed tailor-made part. Here we've got an anatomical model in this next slide of all the different uh, blood vessels that you get in the brain. This patient, in this case, was going to be operated on in the brain. So what we were able to do was to simulate the procedure as surgeons before operating. And surgeons, when they actually carried out this operation, commented on afterwards that it actually reduced the operating time. And they were more confident with what they were going to do. This is something else. As I said earlier, we all have similar anatomies, but there are patients who, of course, have got anatomical variations. 
we try to be minimally invasive with our operations nowadays. And to do so, of course, we need to know what the anatomy that we're going to be finding is going to look like. This is a case of a, a person that had a tumour on the lung. On the scanner, we could see that there was actually an anomaly in the uh, bronchi of this patient. So what the surgeons did was create this model before surgery, they looked at the anatomical relationship between the tumour and the rest of the bronchi, and that allowed the surgeons to do better surgery. And the patient recovered more rapidly, there was less pain, because they knew what, they, what sort of anatomy they were going to come up against. We can also use 3D printing in my speciality for tumours on the thoracic wall. If we have to operate on a patient that's got a malign uh, tumour, we need to be able to remove the tumour without affecting the surrounding tissue. In the past, we couldn't do that because the tumour had extended so much that we couldn't rebuild, we couldn't operate, we couldn't eliminate and at the end of the day the thoracic cage has to be able to move has to because we all breathe and so the thoracic cage is in movement. 3D printing has allowed us to plan surgery and I'll show you a model that we use here in San Sebastian afterwards and plan the reconstruction of the patient post-surgery so that the reconstruction is as anatomical and functional and aesthetically pleasing as possible. I don't know if you know patients uh, that have their sternum sort of that is actually plunging inwards you, you can actually there's a surgery to correct this uh, defect but actually you can do that without the need of a 3d model but Japanese surgeons for a year on all the patients separated on they created this sort of 3d bar that mitted their thorax shape and then molded it according to this 3d model so surgery was shortened because of course the bar has to be shaped according to where we're operating and here it has to be gradually tweaked until you reach the thorax which is similar to the patient's thorax so they uh, avoided losing time, there was no time wasting and it's far easier to operate. There was less complications, less bleeding and less risk of infection. The next group where 3D printing can be used is of course education and training. Education and training of the patient. This is an article published about how 3D um, printed models were used for ear surgery. All of the patients in this article had to spend many hours in the simulator before being operated on. It's like as if you're doing if you're, as if you're flying a plane on a flight simulator. Of course, the more time you fly on a flight simulator, you better you are when you get into the plane. It's the same sort of thing with this. This is the technology that helps us do that. Helps us to repeat the same procedure time and time again with the same anatomy. This is an article in which the importance of 3D printing in vascular surgical simulation and training is assessed. All the student doctors in this uh, hospital carried out uh, surgical procedures on the anatomical models uh, previously and once the their tutor had observed that they had a minimum level of quality they were allowed to move on and operate on patients. And if you don't have models it's almost impossible to do that made to measure implants and prosthesis. This is perhaps the most widespread uh, use of 3D uh, printing. This has been used in hospital here in San Sebastian for many years now, especially to rebuild some um, defects in maxillofacial surgery. If we remove the lower bones of the face, how do we then recover that? A person that's uh, suffered from cancer and has had part of their bone structure removed can then go on and lead a normal life thanks to these uh, models that can be created and implanted after surgery. 
This is a model, a little bit, uh, well, I explained it from the thoracic uh, cage. This is an implant for the thorax. In this case, the patient had a tumour on their sternum and they needed a prosthesis that would allow their thorax to move. The surgery was actually really, really successful thanks to our collaboration with a 3D printing company. If we didn't have this kind of prosthesis, we would never be able to do that with the patient because the thorax would be rigid and the thorax needs to move. And now the patient is really happy. Our reality, two years ago, by the way, I trained here in San Sebastian Hospital. A couple of years ago, we found that there were cases in which anatomy when we reached uh, surgery made surgery very difficult we had to do open more aggressive uh, surgery so we started seeing that actually there were already hospitals already using uh, 3d printing in pre-op models and in our specialty so what we did was together with an engineering company and with radiologists we created a 3d printing lab with uh, surgeons from the hospital, radiologists and engineers all working together. In fact, several biomedical engineering students have actually uh, visited our lab to see how it works. We, so we create our own models together. As a surgeon, if I um, try to prepare a 3D printing model which requires the segmentation of images, I, it might take me three or four days to do that. M and maybe I won't get it right. But if I've got an engineering next to me who can help me or whom I can help and together we can create a model that's so far quicker and far more precise, of course. And we avoid subcontracting out to a company because we've got our lab in our hospital and it's for our patients. But what we found was that the number of patients that we normally have to create models wasn't actually sufficient to assess the impact. So we wanted to know what the impact of 3D printing on thoracic surgery was. We had a limited number of patients. So what we did was we set up a multi-center uh, working group at the Spanish Society of Thoracic Surgery. So there are more or less 21 hospitals throughout Spain and a couple of from abroad and we've now got 27 cases of 3D thoracic printed models and I can show you some examples. The first is you saw it John's in into in John's introduction and it's a, a tumor that's invading the thoracic cage. So what we did was we sectioned all of the area where the tumour could be found and then on the same model we pre-moulded the bars that were going to be then replaced in the patient's thorax bar by bar, rib by rib so the tumour could be removed so what we did is we removed the uh, ribs and then used them, the new ones, sterilised there was one rib that wasn't infected by the tumour. And we managed to do this and then sage in surgical time. These two cases are patients from the Valdecilia Hospital that had uh, lesions in the trachea. I don't know if you can see in the middle of it, it's actually narrower in the trachea there. This can be treated with uh, dilators or through surgery. In this case, the model was used to simulate the dilations that were going to be carried out and to explain to the patient what their problem was. It's far more graphical when you see it. It's almost like, imagine, you've got a problem in your tracker, it's getting narrower and narrower. And when you touch it, you can feel it better and you can accept better the kind of treatment that we're going to offer you. This is the case of a patient from Pamplona who'd had a breast uh, tumour that was invading her thoracic wall. And we decided, after she gave us her informed consent, not to rebuild her ribs to see, firstly, where the tumour was. So when we went to 
uh, the operation, we knew what we were going to find. Uh, the scanner gave us an idea, a very uh, global over idea of what we can. But this is this actually, when you've got a model, allows us to touch it. We were able, as uh, surgeons in the operating theatre, able to decide what we were going to do, touch it, realise what it's going to happen. In this case, this is a tumour that's inside the airway. What we did with this model as surgeons was to appraise where the tumour was in the airway and take the decision of operating in such a way that we didn't have to remove the patient's lungs. This is a very small scale model of a part of a trachea which we used to explain to the patient what they were going through. This is a patient, she was 29, she didn't actually know what was happening to her. For however much we ever explained to her that her trachea had narrowed, but with this model she had an idea of what the problem was and what sort of operation she required. What does the future hold? When we talk about the future in 3D printing, I immediately start about the creation of organs, the printing of tissues, being able to print tissue that could be transplanted and that organically would work. I think that this can happen, but not only do I think it, many of my colleagues do. This is an article that was published in The Lancet. It's an experimental study in which they're seeking to uh, create a sort of matrix that can transport cells that can be implemented in the human body and that will then reproduce. They're all experimental studies. This is a great one here in which they've tried to uh, create a regenerating uh, trachea. Why? Because uh, trachea, ha we all have tra trachea with a maximum length and you can only cut a maximum up to a certain amount away from a trachea. If you've got a problem that is affecting more than five centimeters of the trachea, you can't actually create, you can't actually cut away more than five centimeters, it's impossible. So this is a patient who's going to have to go through an operation and it, it's not going to be ideal. So what these surgeons want to do, and they've practiced this with a mice, what they've done is they've uh, removed part of the trachea and they've implemented a prosthesis which is covered with cartilaginous cells around sort of surrounding the prosthesis and what they've seen is that actually these cells regenerate and, and the trachea is then is functional. Of course we're talk, talking about here experiments with mice so but it's opening a possibility it's opening possibilities but we're still at the mouse stage at the moment and now here you can see different ear models uh, that are being created to implement to implant into patients using tissue regeneration. There are an increasing number of hospitals that use 3D printing and that have a place to 3D print in Australia, New Zealand. It's quite normal. In fact, the first time I read about 3D printing was in an article published by an Australian engineer. Their department of cardiothoracic surgery in this Australian hospital has its own 3D uh, printing lab. So models are created, they're put in the centre of the table and they do a brainstorming session with all the surgeons. What are we going to do? How should we go about this? What's the best option for this patient? How should we go about it? What they found is that they get better results that way. So that's where the future lies. The future is in creating 3D centres, 3D labs uh, to work all together and offer our best care possible to all our patients. Thank you so much.